It's on the battery anyway. Yeah. Sure. Event 23, Mission 23, UAV 40. We are here at Camp Roberts and we are here to do our live fly field experimentation for swarm UAV testing. Swarming is turning out to be one of those capabilities that are both on the defensive and offensive side of interest to the Navy and the Marine Corps. And one of the things that we're doing here is to help push those boundaries and understanding what state of the art is in terms of swarm technologies. We've been able to significantly enhance how we've conducted our live fly field experiments, ranging from just as, as few as six to nine aircraft. Now we're all the way up to 20 and we're here aiming for 30 aircraft if we can, but even anything breaking our previous record of 20 is already uh, gold for us. Our target number is to get to 50 UAVs in live fly experimentation. There's some operational reasons why that number is of particular interest to us. But on top of that, I think it far surpasses anything that we've ever seen before. And we're interested in kind of carving out that next frontier for swarm UAVs. What I have uh, in store for us is as follows. NPS students have been involved all the way from the concept generation side, looking at tools from modeling and simulation to be able to understand some of the nuances of swarm tactics, swarm logistics, and being able to understand even the technologies that one would try to bring together for this, all the way to the field experimentation side where we're interested in building things and testing them out here on the field. One of those things is, for example, a rapid UAV launcher technology. Other things have been understanding how to involve swarm search algorithms and being able to implement those. And so we've had our students involved on the full spectrum of this entire project. I was a student at NPS. I just graduated, master's in uh, systems engineering. So now I'm just assigned to Professor Chung's arsenal lab to help out over the summer. Flying to swarm UAVs, there's a ton of problems that have to be solved. Uh, logistically, one of those is launching the aircraft. And uh, the aircraft we use is a Zephyr II. It's electrically powered and has about a 45 minute endurance. So when you're trying to get 50 aircraft airborne at the same time, you're running against the clock on launch cycle time in order to have uh, any kind of mission endurance. So what they previously used was a bungee launcher and it took about a minute and a half to two minutes to reset each flight. If you do the math on that, it takes 75 minutes just to launch the swarm. At that point, the batteries are dying. So we designed this and it takes the cycle time down to 15 seconds so that they can get the whole swarm airborne in 15 minutes. Gives them about a 30 minute combat endurance. Instead of having one very expensive asset, which we know in wartime can get lost, uh, we lose assets, you know, aircraft goes down and it's a 55 million, possibly more per copy. With the swarms, you have $500, $1,000 machines and you can use 100 of them and accomplish the same mission as a single very expensive asset. So it diversifies. Um, and also swarms maintain efficacy just based off of numbers. So there's no uh, checkmate per se. You can't take out one individual aircraft and see any significant degradation in the operations of the swarm. Whereas if you're flying a single unit like a Global Hawk or something along those lines, you lose your asset, you can have a significant curtailment in your capability. Where we would like to eventually get with artificial intelligence and swarming is to let the swarms determine what the correct course of action should be. And that's actually one of the long-term goals here at Arsenal. They want to do a 50 v 50 air war where instead of an operator actually telling each aircraft what to do, they're making their decisions collectively through uh, emergent behavior in a way that lets them dogfight on their own. And we're not even in the loop. So essentially the human's been removed, the swarm's making a decision, and it's doing it inexpensively with a lot of cheap, cheap items that collectively build a higher intelligence. This is a capability that we're starting to acquire. What we can do with it, uh, virtually limitless. Three, two, one. I think one of the interesting things that we've been able to do with this project has been to help recalibrate what the public opinion is, you know, what public's perception and opinion is on both robotics and unmanned systems as well as swarming. I think one of the key challenges here, of course, is to understand what the different mission sets might be for swarm technologies. And those might include everything from being able to survey large swaths of agricultural fields so that farmers can do better optimization and utilization of, let's say, water, which is an increasingly scarce resource. Another application would be something for the Coast Guard or Combat SAR, Search and Rescue. 
where you're able to deploy larger numbers of assets to go conduct a search and rescue mission. As we start thinking about these types of technologies, uh, where aircraft, in, their, in our case, are able to communicate with one another, uh, they're able to coordinate their searches, you're able to have fewer humans in the operator seat so that they're able to do the tasks that we need to get done without operator overload or sprawling manpower requirements. We're really helping trying to push those boundaries on both the military but also the civilian side. One of the exciting things about this project is being able to do it with such a small but talented team of people ranging from our collaborators from across different departments and organizations. We have ONR, NRL, s and reserve officers uh, that have been participating and they've been essential for our ground operations. We have our interns ranging from juniors in high school all the way to graduating seniors in college that have been contributing to this project immensely. So we're able to only do this with the support of a number of really key, talented, hand-selected, if you will, individuals that are participating on this team and none of this could be happening without their kind of ingenuity, their initiative, and their innovations. And so it's, it's just been an amazing opportunity to work with this group of people. Quantity is a quality all on its own. We have an opportunity to push the boundaries of both technologies and capabilities. We want to understand what the limits are and what the benefits are of those types of capabilities.